First off, there is no blending in with this motorcycle. Because let's not waste any time, shall we? It's beautiful. It was designed so that there was no mistaking the family resemblance. The V2 shares the V4 single-sided swing arm and silhouette. It costs $20,000 in Canadian funds and is the closest thing to a stealth fighter jet that you're ever going to see on the road. It is quite striking, isn't it? I always felt like the old bike was a little bit on the safe side when it came to the styling. I couldn't say the 959 wasn't a beautiful motorcycle, don't get me wrong, but it just didn't stir any emotion for me. This though, this I want a poster of on my wall. See, what makes Ducatis different from other manufacturers is how they make you feel. A proper Ducati should bring you enjoyment to look at and make you feel special every time you take it out of the garage. Anyway, enough about the looks. How does it drive? The first thing you notice when you hop on the bike is the new 4.3 inch TFD display. The graphics and interface have been improved to allow for easier browsing and adjustments. This all ties into the high-tech weaponry at the V2's disposal. This bike now shares all the electronic switchcraft that comes on its big brother. The electronic brain now monitors six axes of movement to keep you pointed in the right direction. This system instantly detects the bike's roll, yaw, and pitch angles and then adapts seamlessly with your inputs. The evil cornering ABS system that accompanies them is the same found on the V4, and it comes with three levels of intervention. The traction control on this bike was developed on the GP18 race bike. The system monitors wheel spin and the bike's lean angle to control power output. They've also integrated the quick shifter into this system. The system will allow enough overseer to make you a more skilled rider, but not enough for you to high side yourself in the next week. The latest wheelie control is also found on the V2. Now the thing I really like about this system is how customizable it is. You can adjust exactly how high you want the front wheel to come off the ground. So you can go from novice to 12 o'clock wheelies and everything in between. The tires have also been upgraded to Prelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 2 tires for the added traction and feel when riding at pace. Ride quality is very similar to the 959 with the right balance of rigidity and compliance. And stopping power is what you would expect from the twin Brembo calipers. But they're powerful and predictable and able to tear your face off at a moment's notice. The real party piece is the engine. Without a question, it is the beating heart of this bike. It's narrow at the knees for easy clickability. Power delivery is smooth and robust. And most of all, it's the sound that makes you crave an excuse to roll in the throttle with this thing. It just is constantly egging you on. Though this bike has been designed to meet emission standards, the Euro 5 compliance has had no ill effect on the grin factor. If you like the power of the 959, you're going to love the V2. And lastly, the riding modes on this bike give you three different preset styles to choose from. You have race, sport, and street. Each gives you the full stable of 155 horses. The only difference is how many they let out at a time. This all adds up to the V2 being one of the best riding Ducati sport bikes I've ever ridden. The seat is plush, the riding position is roomier, the handling is even lighter, and overall it's a real joy to ride. Well, almost. If I had one complaint, and it's not a new one, the heat kicking out of that rear exhaust pipe can be quite punishing on a hot day, especially if you're stuck in traffic. Mount Vesuvius might be 600 kilometers away from Ducati's factory in Borgo Cabana Galley, but it feels like a little bit of it still erupts under your butt. But if I'm honest though, it doesn't matter because in all honesty, it serves as a reminder of the thoroughbred that you're riding. The V2, though it stays true to its roots, it isn't afraid to embrace the technology that would have seemed like magic when Ducati rolled out his first powered motorcycle in 1950. Really, even with today's Cinebel mindsets and after riding the bike, I can honestly say the magic is still there.